words you speak can break witness or make your witness for Christ. There's power in your words. That's Proverbs 18, 21. There's death and life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Your words can hurt or your words can heal. So the way you speak reveals what kind of heart do you have. Are you transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit or not? Uh, Matthew 12, 34 to 35, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak? We're told to um, abandon corrupt communication. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So corrupt communication, what is that? It's um, using the words to inflict harm. But what we're supposed to do, rebuke uh, this behavior and abandon it. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So... How do we reprove or rebuke or put that away? Um, we have to, what is called, bridle your tongue, like a horse, uh, a reins on a horse. Control what we say. Uh, James 1, 26, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but it, it, if he doesn't do that, it deceives his own heart. This man's religion is vain, is worthless. It's not doing what's supposed to do because the tongue um, is full of deadly poison. You know, it can inflict harm. It can be poisonous. But uh, it says in James 3, verse 9, it says, There was we bless God, even the Father will recurse men, which are made out of similar to our God or likeness of God. Um we, at the same time, if we um, use the same mouth to bless God and the same time to curse men who are, who are made out of the likeness, image of God, we're, we're being hypocrites. So out of the same mouth, blessings and cursings ought not be, uh, be doing that. Does a fountain or water or stream send out both? sweet water and bitter water, water that's able, that you're able to drink or water that's unfit to drink. How's this done? So you can pray to God to help you, give you the strength to, um, to speak in a manner pleasing him. Um, uh, David says, set a watch, O Lord, keep my, before my mouth, Keep the door of my lips or guard it. Incline not my heart to an evil thing to practice the wicked words with men that work iniquity. Also set things that not unworldly things or lustful things, things of this earth, but things of heavenly things. So Ephesians 4, 8 says, Philippians 4, 8 says, what's everything? So hang on these things. Model your life after things things that are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Because it's pretty hard to win back your uh, your brother's trust after you're offended at him. I mean, in Proverbs 18, 19, a brother, a brother has offended is harder to be one than a strong city. And their contentions are like bars of a castle. He'll build up a wall, a barrier between you and him. So remember, let your speech always season with grace. Be gracious. Season with salt, which is truth. So be wise, gracious and wise, and discern that you may know how to answer every man that you have the discernment to speak whatever the situation calls for.